Welcome to Two Minute Tech Tuesdays, your weekly video about varnish technology on a Tuesday presented to you in two minutes or less. My name is Thais, I'm the technical evangelist here at Varnish Software and this week's video is about the varnish controller and as the name indicates it is used to control varnish, it's basically management software. So allow me to explain you in two minutes, I'll go ahead and put two minutes on the timer, let's go. The Varnish controller is management software that is used to manage a cluster of Varnish servers or multiple clusters of Varnish servers. Its primary feature set currently focuses on VCL deployment, but as development continues, other types of features will be added as well. So let's see how the controller is used to manage servers. It all starts with multiple Varnish servers being connected to the internet. In order to centrally manage these Varnish servers, agent software needs to be installed on the individual nodes. These agents communicate with the controller through a message queue, the NATS message queue in our case. NATS is just one component of the Varnish controller, but there are plenty of other modular components. The Brains is an example of this. This is a central decision-making component that communicates with the relational database. There's the API gateway that can be consumed by CLI or API clients. And there is a dashboard service that provides a graphical user interface for browsers. Dashboards usually display graphs, charts, counters, and other metrics on the homepage, and for the Varnish controller, it is no different. The true value of the controller is shown on the servers page. These servers automatically register themselves with the controller through the agent software. When clicking an individual one, you also see the deployment that is related to that server. The clue between those components are tags. Servers have tags, deployments have tags. This server happens to share the same production tag with the production deployment. The configuration page lists the various VCL groups. This VCL group only applies to a single domain and has the production deployment that has the production tag. We remember the production tag from the server's overview, but there are other servers that match that tag, so this deployment will match multiple servers. What it will deploy is the production.vcl file. When we click that file, an editor opens up. We can edit the code. This is a very rich editor with uh, syntax completion, auto indentation, and syntax highlighting. Other VCL files can also be selected, it can be uploaded from the computer, or you can create a brand new one in the VCL editor. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, I hope you enjoyed it, and I also hope it provided value to you. Please appreciate the fact that the Varnish controller is a really important project to us, because it will allow us to convert Varnish Enterprise from a set of technology components into a fully integrated product. And in the future, the Varnish controller will be the interface you will use to build your own CDN. That was it for this week. I'll be back next Tuesday with more technology about Varnish presented to you in two minutes or less.